Hey everybody, today we are going to make a Tex-Mex style stuffed pepper. We chose this recipe today because yesterday we made some chili and we have plenty of chili left over. I gotta say, normally I don't like stuffed peppers. I think they're just kind of bland, And but these are actually really, really good, full of flavor, not hard to make. Uh, this will probably take you 20 minutes of prep time, if that much. So great week night meal. Highly recommend it. Doesn't that look pretty? Here's a look at the ingredients you're going to need. Pretty basic chili, some uh, bell peppers, salsa, rice, cheese, and some uh, parsley as a garnish. First thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and get your rice cooking. I prefer to use the uh, minute brown rice. Um, it says it takes 10 minutes to cook, but my experience, it takes closer to about 20. So I'm cooking two cups of it raw because my toddler really likes rice and I'll have plenty left over. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. So add some water to this. I wish I could tell you the exact amount, but it's probably double uh, what the rice took up in volume. I spilled some. Don't tell anybody. And go ahead and turn that on high. Put your lid on, and we'll let that come to a boil. In the meantime, let's go ahead and scoop out two cups of our leftover chili. If you haven't seen that video, it's really, really good chili. Uh, very simple to make. So go ahead and add in about eight ounces of your favorite cheese. Uh, we've talked about this before. What makes a Mexican blend Mexican blend? I don't know, but it's easy to find at the grocery store and it works well. Now that our rice is boiling, go ahead and bring that down to medium heat. Cover it back up and just let it simmer. Now that our rice is done, just go ahead and scoop out a cup full of it and give that a good stir. You've got chili, rice, and cheese. It's really, really hard to go wrong with that combination. If you stopped right there, it would make it a delicious meal. Next, go ahead and bring out your bell peppers. I recommend getting the largest bell peppers that you can. Slice them straight down the middle. Be sure you peel off that sticker. And we've talked about this before, that bell peppers have a Scoville unit of zero, meaning they have absolutely zero heat to them. To get rid of this vein, I like to use a paring knife. Now, if you're new to cooking, what's wrong with this? We're pulling the knife towards our thumb. And then that's counterintuitive to anything I've ever said about cutting to make sure that your fingers and your thumbs are not in a position to get cut. Well, paring is a very legitimate way of cutting things. Very old school method. Notice that the blade is curved. So you're not having to slice through whatever you're cutting, the curvature of the blade kind of takes care of that for you. Now, it is very important that if the blade touches your thumb, and it does happen a lot when you're cutting stuff with a paring knife, that it's okay if it touches, but do not let it slice the thumb, if that makes sense. Touching it, bumping it, okay. Moving it across your thumb, it will cut you, so be careful with that. I'm just making sure all these things fit, which they do. Next, we're going to take some salsa. We're going to spread out, I don't know, about eight ounces of salsa, your choice. Fresh is probably better, but uh, that's what I had on hand. And this is just going to serve as a base for our bell peppers to cook in. I think this really makes a difference, so don't skip that step. So spread your bell peppers out and then just spoon in your filling of the uh, rice, chili, and cheese. Nothing nothing scientific here, nothing uh, with exact measurements. Just fill them up, fill them all the way up. 
All right, it's not shown, but cover this in aluminum foil, and then we're going to bake these at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. That's uh, pretty high heat for a long time, but trust me on that, you don't want to undercook these. And after that, take them out of the oven, take your aluminum foil off, and we're going to spread some more cheese on top, then stick them back in the oven and let the cheese melt. Seriously, with this much meat and cheese, you really can't go wrong with this recipe. So after you got those covered uh, all together using a full 16 ounces of cheese, put that back in the oven. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. Eyeball it. Uh, just wanted your cheese to melt and slice up some cilantro. Well, earlier, I think I actually said parsley. This is not parsley. It is cilantro. It looks very, very similar. The flavor could not be more different. So uh, just squish it up with your left hand and then just slice it. So you're slicing a whole bunch at a time. And it adds a lot of flavor to any dish. So best part now is we get to eat it. So I just made some corn and uh, chilies and tomatoes. Um, nothing special there, but the... Stuffed bell peppers are absolutely delicious. I hope you guys try this recipe. Uh, I'm going to scoop some of that salsa out, put on top. A lot of flavors going on here for something so simple. And then we're going to use the cilantro as a garnish. But unlike most garnishes, the cilantro actually does add a ton of flavor to the dish. Um, I do recommend you try it if you don't like cilantro. If you've never had it, uh, it's a distinctive flavor. I, I encourage you to give it a shot. You'll probably like it. It's one of those things, either you love it or you hate it, no in between. But great dish, especially for a weeknight meal. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. That really helps us out. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and try this recipe. It's pretty awesome.